Troy High School football team took a beating from Thompson Falls during their final home game Thursday, but that didn't stop them from pulling off a few impressive plays. Troy fell 52-6 in another cold game in the rain for senior night, and the Trojans struggled to keep up with the Blue Hawks, who've only lost one game this season. Honestly, we just got outcoached, outplayed, out everything today. It was just a rough one all around, a rough way to go out on senior night. There's always a lot of, uh, there's always a lot of emotions on senior night, um, and it just got the best of us tonight. I just couldn't be more proud of our seniors, though. I, I, out of any group of team I've ever been a part of, I've said it before, uh, any group of team I've played with, I've coached with, this has by far been the most fun team I've ever been a part of. I mean, we were, I went to state with, with Libby Logger Baseball and it was great, but I've never had more fun than I have with this team and that's a testament to these seniors and how hard they worked and how pleasant they made it to be even when we were losing every single game basically besides the one. This group has made it fun the whole time and I, I love it and I owe it to them. After making their first two points on a safety, Thompson Falls followed up with a touchdown almost immediately and continued a steady march, ending the first half 36-6. Troy senior Dylan Peterson carried the Trojans' only touchdown late in the second quarter, fighting off an attempted interception by Thompson Falls sophomore Alex Vogel Sang. Troy junior Jace Fisher was unable to make the two-point conversion, but almost every Blue Hawk on the field had to pile on before they were able to bring him down. Fisher's power was on display more than once that night. In the second quarter, the 6'5", 300-pound Troy lineman made it look easy as he strode through the Blue Hawks' offensive line, plucked the ball from the wreckage he'd made, and powered through another seven yards into Thompson Falls territory. The Blue Hawks seemed to focus more on interceptions than stopping the Troy receivers, eventually resulting in two pass interference calls. One of those calls came in the third quarter, but did not appear to be an attempted interception. Thompson Falls junior Roman Sparks only had eyes for Troy senior Colton Lewis as he ran him down and slammed into Lewis a full second before the ball even reached them. Though the Blue Hawks crippled Troy's passing game, that didn't stop seniors Ricky Starks and Dylan Peterson from getting some good yards either. And though facing a team whose season win-loss record is a complete reverse of Troy's, the Trojan defense returned from halftime ready to fight on. Um, you know, we came out of second half, we were playing solid on defense. We, uh, we were playing like we should have been playing the whole game. I think, you know, the emotions of senior night got a couple of our guys and got us off. Regardless of bumps, Haggerty said this season is just the start of rebuilding the Trojan football program. This year is the base of our program. This is where we're building from. Um, every, every team after this year's team owes a great debt to this, to this team this year. When you look at the Libby Loggers, like a couple of years ago, they did, hadn't won a game. They didn't win a game all year. They lost to Troy. The next year, they won one or two games, and then they kept moving up. And that's how programs are built. And, you know, that team, this Libby Loggers team now, probably owes a lot to that team, you know, gutting through, working hard, just like hopefully in a few years, Troy's going to be good, and we're going to owe it all to, we're going to owe it to it all started here, you know. So I, really, I don't know, I, couldn't, I could talk all night about how much I love these seniors. Go, go, get fired up! But building for the future will take work at more levels than just high school. We need more football in Troy. Um, we average like nine kids coming out in junior high and we can't have that. We need more kids to play. I think we'll, I think we'll get there. I think, uh, I think we'll get there. I think, you know, every town goes through kind of a, a tough spot where there's just not a lot of people coming out. And I think we're, we're coming on the, we're on the edge of that. I think we have a, co a couple of really good classes coming up. Um, and just keeping them involved, keeping them engaged uh, will be huge. So hopefully next year we can get, get, in, get our hands on the junior high program a little bit more and, and uh, I don't know, figure something out. Well, last year we had it open to where it'll be the same this year. Whenever we have a workout, you know, any kids are welcome to join. We had a couple sixth graders join us a couple times last year. And like you're saying about the importance of getting the youth involved at an early age, getting them excited, hopefully we, we can continue to do that but get a better turnout. So. Getting more Troy kids playing football is about more than just building the team's future for Haggerty. It's about building their future as well. That's why football is so great. It's like, it's like life, especially you, you think of like coming from a small town like Troy. Like you don't, a lot of us aren't, don't have silver spoons in our mouth. We have to work for everything we have. And in football, it's the same way. You got to work for every yard, just like in life. You got to work for anything you want. So, so I love coaching football. It's great for the kids. And, I think the senior class is going to do really well in life. I'm really excited to see what they do, what they do after football.